Hello, welcome to the new video from City and Express. Today I'm going to be fitting the continuing system. It's the Epson XP235. So at the moment, uh, this printer, it's got a set of compatible cartridges in it. Well, they were only just doing it today. Uh, the printer was not actually made anymore. So we had to buy a second hand one with some uh, compatible cartridges. We couldn't get hold of a new one from anywhere. So uh, I'm going to remove the compatible cartridges. Basically I'm just pressing the in cartridge change button to get the print head to move. And I'm going to pop the cartridges out. It's quite restrictive view on this. I can't get the... Uh, I'll try and get a better camera shot in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me, I can't get the lid open. Okay, so I'm at the uh, the maximum for the lid open, so let's just take it back a bit. Right, so the continuous ink system, you'll have already filled and primed it uh, already, so I'm just going to pop this in, just like a normal set of cartridges. And what you need to do is you're pressing down at the front and at the back of the cartridge, and you're pressing down quite firmly. Listen for the clicks. So when it's in, uh, the secondary check is you need to push diagonally down on the locating lugs. Now if you hear a uh, click now, it means one of them wasn't clicked in properly. And what that would do is that when you switch the printer on, it would just say I'm not recognised. So, it doesn't feel like that one's clicked in. No secondary click, so it might be, but it just feels like it's not in the right position. Uh, but we'll see when we get it on uh, if it's recognised. So on the incline clamp uh, there's a grey arm. You need to remove the green backing tape from the grey arm. Now before you affix it to the side of the printer you just need to make sure that you've got a nice straight loop coming off here. There's no twists, no turns, no uh, kinks in it. And if there is you just need to twizzle it round to get rid of them. It gets affixed here right on the edge and you're going to press down you're going to press down firmly just to get a good addition on that. So I'm going to, I did unplug the printer uh, once the head started to move so it was on I'm just going to switch it back on now. But before I switch it on, I'm going to remove the four small pl flat plugs. What it's going to want to start doing is, it's going to want to start doing a char possibly a charging and a cleaning cycle. At that point there, the ink needs to be able to flow. So just going to stop halfway through install, remove the four small flat plugs. I'll come back to that in a minute, uh, just before I power it on. So the printer doesn't have a display on here as such that will report uh, an empty cartridge or an error. It, it will basically report itself on my computer screen. So let's just have a look and see if... Uh, See if the cartridges are recognised. Yeah, so you can see there that the in cartridge warning lights come on. It's probably coming up on my computer screen. Uh, but what you are probably going to need to do is reset the cartridges. So I'm going to press the in cartridge change button for six seconds probably let it go too early there you just basically keep it on and there until the head starts to move it's a long six seconds this is so the print heads come over and what I'm actually going to do I'm going to press the reset button one, two, and then press this button, the in cartridge chain, and it will just move over to the next colour. And it will repeat the process for all, all four colours. And the last one, and then what it will do is it will do it one more time when it goes over to the right hand side. And for the last time, this is quite normal this is on this model.
and that's it the cartridge is a recognized one thing I can see here uh, I've probably fitted this to about eight or nine different printers now is that the incline is very close to this here uh, there's some sensors in here and it will report uh, a paper jam when it's not if it's get close if it gets close so I'm just gonna uh, pull some slack through and just what I'm gonna do is you see how close that is I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit there we are but you can't bring it up too much because the cartridge needs to go all the way over to the left hand side so just make sure that it's not uh, touching the bottom of the printer in this area here so the cartridges are all recognized now so I'm going to tell it to do a cleaning and a charging cycle I can only do that from my computer so let me just uh So it's going to do a cleaning and a charging cycle, I'll do that now just to cut down some time uh, on the video. But let's go back to installing the rest of the SIS system. So within your accessory pack you're going to have your little air filters which look like this. These need to in be installed with the narrow pointed end facing upwards to allow the air to come in to help with the ink flow. So this is system, uh, the ink line, it's long enough to reach around the back of the printer, but the, the SIS system must be on the same level as the base of the printer. If you raise it in the air, it will just, it will, while the SIS system's installed, it will empty the entire contents into the bottom of your printer. So just keep it on the uh, on level, level with the base of the printer. Right, the next part, so the lid on this model will be kept slightly ajar to allow the freedom of movement for the incline so when the incline comes over to the left hand side uh, so when the incline comes over to the left hand side the tube comes up in the air so we do need a bit of room for the tube to be able to, to move so on this model the lid is slightly ajar so to keep the lid slightly ajar within your accessory pack with some double height clips you're going to remove the backing tape from them now the first one is going to be placed such a small printer, I don't mind spinning this round on this model. So it's just to get a better view. So the first one's going to be placed here, it's just behind the hinge. And then the second one's going to be over here on this end here. So again, remove the green backing tape. But what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to slip the incline onto this one. And then I'm just gonna I'm gonna attach my clip just at that point there, just on the end. Just on the end there, just to tidy up the incline. So when the lid is closed, it won't close all the way, so basically it will rest on the clips. So that probably wants, uh, one of them needs adjusting, let me just have a look. Yeah, it's, it's this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring my clip forward slightly. Just to get my incline, my clip, so it's not overhanging so much. There we are, so the lid's actually gone down a lot more. So what before, uh, I'd actually got the clip too far over and there's a little lip here so actually now you can see the lid closes a lot better now I've just moved that clip slightly inwards so it's finished its head clean now uh, we can probably just run a nozzle check sheet off and then a couple of prints so it's running a nozzle check now yeah. And then once it's done that, I'll, uh, I'll run some prints off so you can see. So you'll see what I meant there about the uh, the incline there. It comes up here so it needs the, move, the freedom. So we have a bit of a trail of uh, ink on there, which, which doesn't surprise me, to be honest, uh, at this point, because we've just installed the, uh, the SIS system. Uh, but let's, uh, 
We'll probably have to run. Probably have to run two or three of them. Yeah, so you can see now, it's basically that, that trail of ink on that last one, it was just caused by the install of the SIS system. Uh, we've got a tiny, tiny little drop there at the top, but that'll be gone by the next one, by the time I print a photo. So yeah, we have a perfect nozzle check, so I'm going to print some pictures. Just let me get them up on the computer. So I'm going to run a few copies with the lid open uh, and then with the lid closed just so you can see the, uh, exactly what's happening. So this is how it works with the lid open. And you can see there why I mentioned about the clearance on the tube hitting this bottom sensor plate here. And then with the lid closed. And that's, uh, that's it really, uh, I'll just lift the lid up one last time so you can see it, see it working. And it just sits there, uh, nice and tucked away on the right hand side of the printer. And that's how you install the continuous, continuous ink system on the Epson XP235 from City Ink Express. Thank you.